Hello. This will be the talk about reproducible builds presented by Stephen, Chris, Yatan, and myself, Holger. Um, I'll just leave this sta stage now for Yatan, who will start. Oh, yeah. yes. um, hi, everybody. So, welcome to our talk. Um, we will present reproducible buster. Um, well, as you know, reproducible builds have the purpose to enable to anyone to reproduce identical binary packages from a given source. And our project goals are enable uh, the ensure builds have identical resources. And also we want to change the meaning of free software. It is only free software if it is reproducible. Um, during the last months, we, uh, we have given some talks um, like Bonhack, All System Go, All Things Open, OSE, Hackmeet, FreeNote, Leaf, KubaConf, Open Compliance Summit, Linux.conf.au, Fastdem, Scale, Nilug, LibrePlanet, Easterheg, uh, MiniDevConf, Curitiba, Fastnord, Floss UK, and mentioned by several talks at um, 3 for C3. Um, what we have new since DEFCON 17 in Montreal, uh, okay, uh, we have done the migration to Salsa. Um, also, we had the tiered reproducible build summit in Berlin, and we have um, discussing about the, the logo and the, the, the voting, um, and this is the new uh, logo for our team, uh, but not the final typeface and color. But we will soon have t-shirts, yay, which we like wanted for more than a year. Okay, so uh, since uh, DevConf in Montreal, um, a few things have happened. Um, in GCC Upstream, um, a patch was merged that um, is called Macro Prefix Map. Um, th this, um, in our use case, refers to um, build paths and being embedded in the binary. So, in this small example, C source file, um, use of this uh, file macro. If if you comp if the if the compilation process um, calls the compiler with the full path to um, to main dot c, then um, the the current working directory would end up embedded in the binary. And so, depending who builds the package, they will always get a different result to someone else. Um, in the case of uh, Debian builds, the build path is random every time. So this would be a this this opens a whole class of reproducibility issues in packages, um, but this this new option in upstream GCC um, allows to do kind of a search replace of the 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 path wherever it is used in macros and um, change it to something that is reproducible between different builds of the source file. Like so. We are talking with four people, so maybe. Watch. Um, the problem with this build pass issue is that for Buster, we just say we use the same build pass as it was originally built to reproduce, because else we won't have these 93% we're having, but we would have something in the 80s. Cause this bug is not solved, not in GCC and in many other compilers. So we say for Buster, we say just use the same build path to reproduce than the original build. But this is bullshit. <laughs> so that's why we don't want to do this. That's why people are dealing with this GCC build passes. But it's a long-term goal, maybe not even bullseye, I guess. It will take some time because there's other compilers having the same issue. But we want to fix this properly. So that's why we're discussing this, and then we then we put it away. Um, 
so there was a bug report um, late last year um, where um, thanks to a package being reproducible, it was possible to test. Um, if I drop a particular build dependency at build time and build the package, um, does it make any difference to the, the binary output? Because if it doesn't, then um, it doesn't need to be there as a build dependency. So this is one possible application of reproducible builds that wasn't really intended or much thought about, but um, some kind of automated QA could be possible there to find um, is a build dependency really necessary? Because if it's not, that could mean a, it's uh, wrongly listed in the build dependencies, or it could mean that something has wrongly compiled and not used a build dependency and not enabled a feature that it should have enabled. Um, so reproducible builds extends way beyond Debian itself. Uh, for example, the Reproducible Builds Summit brought together people from many open source projects. Um, not, it's not at all limited to Debian. Um, there's been a lot of interest and activity in other projects. Um, Arch Linux uh, announced they were able to, with a modified version of their package manager, um, reproduce at least 80% of their packages. Um, OpenSUSE 93%, um, NetBSD and FreeBSD potentially 100% with the right um, configuration options for the build. Um, Tails have gone even further with their 3.3 release and again in 3.6.1 they, they made the whole installation binary media um, bit for bit reproducible, which is sort of the, the ultimate goal. Uh, similarly, OpenWRT can do this for at least some of the, the images they produce. Um, and then there's plenty more interest in, in other projects that are looking to promote that, the fact that they support or enable or hel help with reproducible builds in some way. Um, shortly after the DevConf in Montreal, um, it was accepted into the policy that uh, Debian packages should be built reproducibly. But that's not a, a hard requirement, of course. So what's uh, still missing in Debian? I'll pass okay. it to Holger. I'm, I'm the one telling the bad news. So DI images are not reproducible, and nobody is working on this. So if you want to get involved into reproducible builds and have some spare cycles, look at DI images, why they are not reproducible. That is. Rather easy task, build DI twice, run Diffoscope on it, and fix the problem. Um, <coughs> choose Niels. Um, <laughs> and this is the other thing, there's also Debian CD images could also be made reproducible, just like the Tails ISO. Because they, they, they will still contain without unreproducible packages, but they are reproducibly assembled into the same images all the time. The other thing, what we are not doing, we don't compare against packages from the archive. We just compare packages we built with packages we built, but not the real ones in Debian. Um, that should be fixed. And that will help us detect when maintainers build in unclean environments. Um, and then funding has impact, and it's actually rather the lack of funding because we were, um, we used to be get paid, or some of us used to get paid um, by the core infrastructure initiative, and that funding ran out at the end of last year. So since then, we have less progress on new developments, <laughs> stuff like the GCC stuff, stuff like comparing packages against the real archive. Lots of progress is slowing down. Some things even go backwards, like. It's not only Jenkins, it's 54 hosts running these tests, and there's some issues on i386, there's some issues here and there, and there's no time to fix those. There's impact on collaboration and community, like there's a, the summit in Berlin needs to be um, prepared soon, like in two or three months, and somebody needs to do it, and I used to do it the last three times, and I'm not sure if I have time or go working somewhere and make money. And we keep up the weekly block and pr 
the blog about our success every week. So people think, oh, this is going nicely, 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 and don't realize that it's going slower and slower and not so good. So we ha don't have funding. We would be interesting to get funding to extend this to keep the work done because it's still a lot of work. And then Debian is wrong, <laughs> also thinks wrongly. This 93% is a lie. <laughs> we need infrastructure, we need processes and policies. Not only in, at the moment we have in policy it should be reproducible, but there should be policy that it must be reproducible, that the security things have to be in place, these things. What we have at the moment is testing, but we only have testing of SQA thing, and we have a vague goal, packages should be reproducible, but it's not a must, so who cares? And there's an upcoming list of bugs, and with that we don't want to finger point at teams, um, but rather make it clear what's missing, um, because only if it's clear that there's some things are not there, we can fix them, because else if we think everything is fine, we cannot fix them. And most of the things we cannot do alone, even if we have an FTP team member on board, um, he also cannot do everything, and the FTP team, and it must come from Debian, I think, we'll see. So, <coughs> one of the major blockers is, and the, the, it's unclear whether it's an SBIL, DPUT, or DPACKET, is that when you do a source-only upload in AMD64, build info changes file is usually produced because you build on AMD64. That gets uploaded to the archive, Duck sees it, um, and then the, the binary build happens and another AMD64 build info file is created and that's uploaded and Duck says no. And um, there could be several ways to solve that. Dput could just not upload these files or dpackage could rename them differently. Or, yeah, something needs to be happened there, and there needs to be consensus on this bug first, and then the fix is rather easy, I think. <coughs> then we have this wonderful problem with bin NMUs and the M times and rsync. So, when a bin NMU is made, uh, a new Debian changelog entry is created, but it's not put in the source. <laughs> and then the package is built with this changelog entry with the same source date epoch as before, with getting different files, and they are then not the same, and then, but the M time is the same because of the same um, source date epoch, and then rsync says things of the same file, it caused a backup problem. Um, and this prob probably needs to, uh, needs a redesign how bin MUs are done. So the bug, I think, is at the moment also assigned to FTP Debian org. There was, almost consensus on the bug and then the discussion started, restarted in the middle two years ago, I would say. Um, maybe read this bug and reply, especially if you're involved in the build these infrastructure. Um, this also has, I think, problems for multi-arch. So it's not only backup and reproducible, but multi-arch is also broken with because of this. And then we have a bunch of problems with build, build info files. Um, this bug is about um, putting the build info files to build info Debian net um, so that we have them outside FTP master. They are also mirrored on COSIA, I think. So DDs can get the build info files, but the general public cannot. Um, this is, I think, I spoke with Gunnar yesterday because I knew he would leave today. And in general, Gunnar said, send patches via Salsa. They merged 15 patches last week or this weekend. So they are happy to merge purge patches. Um, and there's the stuff which does send bugs to the B bug BTS, sends information to the BTS. That function could probably be adopted to do this for the build info files. Then we also want to include the build info files in the archive. So having them on build info Debian net is just a workaround, but it's an easier workaround. So we have these two bugs, and you see that bug is way older. And then we have the problem with security updates, because security is an embargoed host, so things are slightly different there. And this bug also needs to be separated into this build info Debian net and in the archive. But we need this to have reproducible security updates, which we could have as a feature since stretch, because this toolchain supports it, but the infrastructure doesn't. 
So this is another interesting bug. And yeah, stretch is the was the release reproducible in theory, but not in practice. We had the package, the patches in there, but we didn't rebuild the packages. Buster is we should reproducible, like in policy it should, but we are not reproducible. And bullseye is then maybe the release we still haven't made it. I would be very sad if this is becomes real. So I'd rather see, say. Buster is still not released, it's not even frozen, there's half a year at least to work on these things, so maybe we can make Buster a lot better than what it's looking like now. That's it from us, thanks. I think we have plenty of time for questions. We have two microphones. We had them. Do you have questions? Do you think reproducibles are useful? <laughs> do you think we can get do better for Buster than I just made painted black? No comments? Nobody wants a microphone? <laughs> so maybe more comment than question. So from your talk, I understood that this is more um, question first of manpower and some support and also question of community agreement that we should do this and everybody does their, their own part, but also that we have some common goal, like what we do with build info, how we change NMOs and, and something like this. Is that correct or did I misunderstood something? I think that's correct. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. So it, it's actually a, a lot more uh, policy or, or design of um, more complex structural problems in the infrastructure. Um, so it's more that that than um, individually working through individual packages, fixing them. Question? There's still a lot of work on individual packages as well. We still have 500 non-applied patches. There's 500 NMUs to be done. So if you want to NMU packages five a day, you can do so for the next 100 days. If you just do one per week, you're helping. So please consider doing one per month. Yeah. Um, Holger, I was talking to you at, at Montreal, uh, someone may know I maintain Thunderbird package and it's a huge package uh, and I'm not able to get this package reproducible because of lack of time, lack of knowledge at ETC. How did you see packages like Thunderbird? There must be more than such packages. How can we improve the situation on such a thing? I haven't a uh, really good idea to solve this. Um, I, I certainly get what you mean. There's quite a few packages in that category and quite a few tool chains in Debian in that category that are just like where do you start with something like you know Firefox, Thunderbird, etc. Um, have you spoken to upstream at all? Because I think if you got perhaps a uh, buy-in there they might start looking at stuff and then they perhaps coordinate some of the effort between other distributions. Because part of the problem is <laughs> I see. I see that face. <laughs> yeah, we have had luck, but Mike is working for Mozilla and Sylvester also. But my communication has slightly going in a bad way with both persons because of there is no communication currently. I've asked both persons uh, because of a new ESR version, and I got quite zero feedback. So it's quite difficult to get in, in contact with uh, with both and, and to ask. I, I think Mozilla, especially the Thunderbird team, is really um, an, an, a team that gets, um, where you can probably get easy in contact and they are uh, friendly to, to answer my questions. 
but mostly these problems are need to be done by by the Firefox core team because especially with Thunderbird uses I think 90% of the code is Firefox and um, there are four coders currently that even very happy to get even the e-fail uh, bug fixed in just in time for the rest is quite no personal power on, on this side yeah. That highlights another problem, because Firefox, or rather Tor Browser, was reproducible, made reproducible in 2012 by the Tor Browser people. And we had Firefox reproducible in our test setup, then it was not reproducible again anymore, and, it's, and that's because Firefox is changing a lot their code, and then they use new technologies, which where the, maybe the tool chain was not reproducible. So we also, once we achieved reproducibility, we still need to test and make sure that it's continuous reproducibly. And I think for these big packages, upstream is this thing. I don't think Debian maintainers can solve all upstream problems, whether it be reproducible or others. Um, so sometimes it's just wait. If you cannot do it, then wait that somebody else does it. And the, what we can do as a project, we can have this list of important packages, the base set, the required set, the CD set, and then see, OK, we have 25,000 packages, and 93% means there's 2,000 unreproducible packages. But the, the, the basic install has only 2,000 packages, and out of these are only 50 unreproducible. So let's tackle the first 20 of those 50 first, and then get there step by step by step. I think what we can do is perhaps help you convince upstream to make it a higher priority. Because sure, they're going to work on e-fail first, and then perhaps new features. And like presumably they're not against reproducible builds. I mean, no one here is against the idea. Of, like, who's for them? Yeah, sure. I like. I'd vote for heaven too. Um, but yeah, if we can, if we can help move it up their priority list and make it a bit more of a concern for them, I think that's something that we can help. Because that's sort of fairly generic information that would work for Firefox, Thunderbird, LaTeX, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, maybe we can build such a place where, like Holger mentions, uh, we can collect such packages that can be problematic. But, or no, um, as I said, I think there must be more packages like Thunderbird, mm. which need interaction from upstream, that's correct. Even if I have fixes, or we need to go upstream, of course. Yeah. yeah. We have such a place where we collect these lists already. There's package sets in our tests. Um, web pages where there are these sets like GNOME and the first CD and packages installed on Debian org and packages here and there. Um, I, th I think perhaps the notes Git repository might be the other place. Yeah. Was, yeah, that's more salient for a particular one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cheers. Cheers. Hey guys, um, I don't know if anyone has thought about or talked about it before, but can't we just like make a CI CD system where the package just goes mainstream if it's reproducible? A what system, sorry? Uh, continuous time? integration delivery. Like you have, uh, you upload a package, we test it if it's reproducible, if it is not, you don't go mainstream. You know what I mean? Yes, but this, um, you want to prevent packages from reaching unstable when they are unreproducible? Yes. But then we won't have Firefox. And we <laughs> probably, uh, and Thunderbolt, and probably not the Linux kernel. And or maybe oh. not unstable, but I don't, maybe some packages. If it, it's a Debian policy right now, we can enforce it. Well, at the moment, it should. So it's just a normal bug. It's like, yeah. Um, so I think we must get to mud. We must get to policy. Say packages must be reproducible. But even then, the release team will override these bugs and say, "Ah, we want to release with Firefox. Uh, let's ignore this RC bug." And I'm thankful the release team will do that because <laughs> I want Firefox. I need Firefox or whatever. Um, <laughs> so, but I think I think the bigger thing is that. We could we could do that like that's like technically feasible, but does that does it really help in the sense that we've all got buy-in on the problems like magic making it impossible to upload to Sid if your package isn't reproducible? 
doesn't really solve these infrastructure problems, and that's like our real like blockers at the moment. If you see what I mean. Um, so, yeah, I th no, no one's against having reproducible packages. So I'm not really sure what it would help, apart from having a, a distro without Maybe it would help, bash. Uh, in the sense that we can. Uh, if we upload on only packages that are reproducible, maybe the package in the archive will be reproducible by default. You know what I mean? We um, won't have to test it against ar the archive. I don't quite get it, sorry. Is it yeah. If you're proposing that we test against the archive instead of te testing against our stuff, yes, we should do that. But this is the part we had with lack of funding, the, our um, new progress slowed down. It's on the to-do list since more than a year. We can, since December 2016, we can do it because we, the archive produces reproducible packages now. But we never got along to implement this, and that was, would still not prevent getting the packages in, but it would give real results. That would definitely better, we would, should do that. It was something of an opt-in, so that a package manager could say, if when I upload, my package is no longer reproducible, then um, don't, don't, don't accept. Hi. From the maintainer point of view, what, are, what is the status of, of build tools? with regards to reproducibility. So do I build a package and, and I don't need to do anything to have pbuilder tell me if it's not reproducible or not, or yes or no? Do I need to do to get to go through hoops or do additional steps to get that information? Should we work in in providing the maintainers? I'm a maintainer, may, maybe I don't have much idea of reproducibility, but I don't even test it because it doesn't come by default, even if it's not yet in, in if it's a should, it's not a must. Testing for reproducibility will increase the build time at least by 50%. And so that's why the, those tools don't do, that's one of the reasons those tools don't do it by default. Um, like pbuilder also ra doesn't run PU parts by default. Um, but why pbuilder can do that and it cannot do a test for reproducibility at the moment. We do have repro test in Debian, which uh, it's also available outside Debian, I think. And RepoTest will build a package twice. And if it's then unreproducible, it will reduce the number of variations and build it again with reduced variations until it finds a reproducible version, hopefully. And then it will tell you, is able to tell you your package is unreproducible with time zone variation or with whatever the variation causes, so it helps you to find the problem. But sometimes it's not possible that this it finds something what helps you. And sometimes repo test, because it also uses fake time, packages are more likely to fail with re to build with repo test because of fake time being used. So there is not the tool. Also, what we have in our testing infrastructure, we have kind of maximized variations, but there might be other variations in the wild. So that is the the one of the not core central problems with reproducibility, you can only prove the opposite. You can only prove that something is not reproducible and you can only assume it is reproducible under a variety of environments as until you find an environment where it's not reproducible anymore. And so testing for reproducibility is not so easy. So I, I also don't, I also think because of this that I don't think that maintainers must test or should test the packages for reproducibility before uploading. I think maintainers should test whether the package builds and whether the package works, but testing whether it's reproducible, I think it's out of scope usually for the normal uploader process. When, particularly when you can check the status on tests.reproducibleBuilds.org as well. So that takes like the, the urgency out of that in a sense. See that it's a problem because if you if, so, if, if you fix the reproducible issues, you want to confirm this, and then you do an upload so that this infrastructure tests it. It's kind of suboptimal. I mean, particularly with the um, 
what five, you say 500, I think it's more like a thousand unapplied patches. Um, it's great. And maintain you get a patch. It's like, well, I'm just, am I just going to apply it? I want to see what difference it makes. And without uploading it, it's quite difficult to tell if it's actually going to make your package reproducible because you don't necessarily have the tool locally to to, to validate that. So it's like, well, great. I don't really want to just cowboy applying patches. Um, with Diffoscope, you could check that if you had the image that worked, having this that gave rise to the uh, the stat on reproducible builds. So, would there be a way of saying, "Please preserve the image," because I'm just doing a build. Next time you build this, and then uh, you could push your your built package at reproducible builds for an, another run through the tests. You wouldn't. You probably wouldn't even need the image, right? Because if if I sent you a patch for your package, I say, "Please apply this." Once you apply this, you should get a char of X. Yeah. If you get the same char. Then you've won. Yeah. And, and if not, it's probably your build environment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will do that. Cute. But one one of the problems in the in the, or one example for the problem is that on our, our test infrastructure we build with German, French, English, and Italian locales to um, test local variations, but some packages fail to build with Hebrew or Arabic, or Chinese, or they, they produce different results when used, whatever, not, those, those languages are fine, but with Finnish it fails. And so you, you can only fix it for that, and then and we, we won't do all the builds with all local variations. But especially locales are so confusing and complex that I'm sure we, there's some bugs we don't catch yet. And that's a principal problem. You said you had some funding issues. So what kind of sponsors are you looking for? Let's say people are watching you and you want to tell the sponsors that it's some important work. I think we didn't prepare much for this question because we prepared for the Debian audience what we can fix for technical problems. <laughs> um, Nothing really to add. I mean, for for sponsors, it, we, we would probably have to speak to their needs. I mean, because um, they would probably want to, they're probably com coming from a particular angle that they want to solve for their business. Um, whether that's to do with, say, a compliance angle, or they want to have a security angle, like you need to have like probably different messages, and you're you're sort of talking. If you talk to them, like. You know, ten people. You're going to want ten different images, messages there because they they just have different demands. Because just to say reproducible builds at them, it's not really that uh, not that effective. Well, for for Google, it already made um, code build times lower. Quite. That's just another example of another that. Uh, that's a third example of you might want to speak to Google to say, oh, we can make your coding time smaller for the you know, hilarious XKCD reference. Um, but as, like for a, a big manufacturer of equipment, you may want to say, oh, you really want this, or a manufacturer of medical equipment will need a different message because they have a different use case for reproducible bills. They don't care about build time. If you're okay, so yeah, yeah, making audit easier by seeing what changed between two versions of, of your compiled code. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with the the use cases. I'm just saying that each uh, potential sponsor will have their own different needs, um, and so therefore you you can't just you can't just like have a list of a hundred things that it's good for and and let them let let them do all the work in in working out what fits them. If you see what I mean. I think this was very good at the funding we had, that this was essentially research funding. And it's a, to a lot of degree, it's a research project. 
and many pr other projects benefit from our research and use it. Um, and it's hard to get funding to continue with the research. It would be easy to get funding to make whatever, write a patch for GCC that because we need it, then they could see, oh, this is the goal and fix this thing. But in my experience, it was way better, this broad funding we had, and then we could look at the problem as broad as we wanted and caught way more issues with it and had a wider impact on the community also. Um, so research funding, I think, would be our preferred model. Is that all for questions? Okay, good, and thank you all for watching. <laughs>